Cool. Um, but we are now going to move on to talking about nurture programs. Um, nurture programs are awesome. I love them a lot. Um, it's pretty much what all I live and breathe in my day-to-day -day job. Um, but I'm, they can get a little bit dry, so I'm trying to make it a little bit more fun by adding in a few more gifts about one of my terrible, terrible guilty pleasures of a television show, RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> So we're going to now talk about the what, the why, and the when of nurture programs. Um, what are nurture programs? They essentially are setting up a process of developing up relationships with your customers. Um, pretty much so that you can identify what stages of the different buyer cycle they're in or different part of the buyer journey that they're actually in so you can better communicate and better build these relationships. They tend to focus on listening to the leads of your prospects or customers um, and help to provide them with all of the answers that they're actually going to need at that particular buy stage. So the why. The goal of our lead nurturing programs are to move prospects through that actual buyer journey. We're trying to educate them, we're trying to engage with them at each of these different stages. And the when. This one, to be honest, really depends. It really depends on so many different factors. But you kind of want to make sure that you're targeting leads at the very particular buyer stage that you're focused on. The last thing you really want to be doing is creating an onboarding program and actually have people who have been customers of yours for six years running through that particular program. So in terms of when you're actually nurturing people, it really kind of does depend. Oh, I'm having Di's problem. <laughs> So what I wanted to quickly touch on here were the differences between engagement programs and drip nurture programs. Um, engagement programs are your standard nurture program feature within Marketo. Drip nurtures are a little bit slightly different and we're going to cover off each of these now. So engagement programs are typically used for complex nurture programs. Um, they are ones that kind of contained various streams for your different subjects, your different topics, whatever that might happen to be. Um, they tend to trigger at very set periods of time. So that could be once a week, it could be once a month, it could be twice a week. They're very regular, very kind of steady cadences. Drip nurture programs, however, are typically used for more simple types of email communications. Um, their cadence is a lot more relative. So they could be based off, say, a form submission. So it might be you might have a two email nurture of sorts or a drip nurture off the back of filling out a content download or a white paper. So it's a little bit more basic. Thanks, Drew. <laughs> so this is pretty much what I live and breathe as far as my day to day. Um, I am spending most of my time staring at whiteboards, mapping out my customer journeys. Um, this is essentially the very first part that you should be doing when you are planning out your niche program. Before you start getting into Marketo, map out your journeys. This is going to help you to identify out what all of the requirements are for each of your prospects, your customers, wherever it is that they are in that buyer journey. It basically is just going to allow you to start mapping out what are those key requirements. It's, uh, this is essential in everything that you're having to do. Streams kind of come just after that. So once you've identified what those uh, different key requirements are, this is kind of where you can start mapping out those particular streams within your engagement program. These are going to be based on things like, uh, they could be behaviors, they could be uh, particular topics. Um, so I know that uh, when I've worked within um, previous organizations, they've been very much based on the different product lines that we've had. Sometimes they've been based on cadence. So I've got a fast nurture, and a slow nurture. So one that's triggering twice a week, one that's only triggering off an email once a week. So one of the key things is this last comment down here. The stream's objective, generally, is to move them into the very next stream. So different story with that cadence from before, but for example, like what I've got here, stream one's objective isn't to make you purchase, it's to get you to add to cart. As far as the ins and outs of engagement nurtures, one of the key things here are your transitions. So we've just briefly spoken about how to, or sorry, of setting up each of your streams. We need to talk about transitioning people from one stream into another. So how do we actually look at doing that? So once we've actually defined those and you've kind of got that understanding of how people should be moving into from one to another, 
we need to kind of better understand what those data requirements are. So this could be based on anything. It could be lead score, it could be the opportunity status, it could be interests or preferences that they've set in the email preference center. Essentially what we're trying to figure out is how do we get someone from Cameron Michaels here as a boy into drag? <laughs> so what is the transition? What are those key data requirements that we need to move someone from one stream into another? So from a boy into a drag queen. <laughs> One of the absolute most key parts of the entire nurture process, however, is your scenario validation. So this is basically just a testing process. Um, what you're doing by trying to validate your scenario is you're trying to run through a whole bunch of test example scenarios to make sure that your actual plan works. Um, so you need to make sure that you're outlining a few, uh, sorry, a few key scenarios with someone that they sort of, as examples like whether or not they should or shouldn't be added to a particular stream. Um, should this particular person be paused when they enter the funnel or should they be running a sta at a standard cadence? Um, and do my transitions that I've just set up actually work the way that I've intended them to? Finally, we need to look at making sure that we are reporting. Marketo have some pretty standard um, easy reports in there which give us a lot of information. The, if, you're using, excuse me, if you're using engagement programs, you've got the engagement score to help better identify what, uh, if your email is, uh, has a high or good engagement or a low poorer one. Um, in terms of measuring success, that's kind of going to be dependent up to you. Um, mm -hmm. So if you've got a smart campaign that sort of is defining success upon downloading a white paper or clicking a link, then that's awesome. Making sure that you're kind of capturing that is really key to these as well. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to jump into Marketo um, and we're going to kind of do a bit of a live demonstration on how you kind of build out a, an engagement program. How do we look at setting up transitions and how do we look at setting up streams and things like that? So we're just going to quickly flick over. And Grace is going to walk us through how to build one. Okay. I'm going to have to apologize in advance because this section does not have GIFs, but I haven't figured out how to embed GIFs into Marketo. So imagine colorful, bright, fun things happening. Um, before we jump into this, though, there's one thing I really want to run through, um, which almost every time I talk about it, I'm really surprised by the number of people who don't know that this exists in part because Bless and Marketo are not particularly great about documenting this feature, um, which is the program import library. So I see a couple of nods. Hands up if you know what that is. Okay, a few people, good. Um, for the rest of you, I'm sorry, you're about to realize that a lot of time that you spend has been wasted. Um, <laughs> Marketo have a program library that you can import stuff from. It is available to everyone. It is automatically turned on for basically every instance. And it lets you import a bunch of um, best practice pre-built templates for pro like all sorts of different programs into your instance and use those as a starting point for building stuff out. So I'm gonna get Josh to show you quickly how, if he remembers, you remember how to do it, how to get into it. So um, basically anywhere in Marketo where you've got that little new drop down, you will also see an import program button. If you click on that and select the Marketo program library from that drop down, and from that point, you will see an enormous list of all sorts of different things, which will have funny naming conventions, and a lot of them have no documentation, and it's kind of confusing what they do. Um, import it, find out. That's kind of how I figured it out. But there are quite a few different nurture ones, and I would really recommend if you um, haven't really done too much with nurtures so far, and especially if you're interested in doing nested um, default programs in nurtures and you haven't done that before, start off with these. They're a really great point for um, kind of seeing how things best practice should be run, but also it just means you don't have to start from scratch, which saves time. Um, so there's a couple of different nurture options. There's a simple one, which basically is just your standard program 
folder structure and a couple of emails. There's also a more advanced one, and that's the one that's got your um, nested default programs all set up. You can also import um, just one of the nested default programs separately, which is those topic X, topic Y, topic, y, topic Z. So you can import all of those individually as well. Um, recommend having a scroll through this if you didn't know it existed before. There's program templates for um, for lead scoring, for like standard um, content download stuff. There's a bunch of different options that it can help you save time if you don't have your own program template set up. It's um, helpful if you do have your own program template set up. It's a helpful way to save time in the process of setting them up. Um, but we're not going to import one of them right now because it takes the time. So um, we've, we've pre-baked we, a couple. One thing to keep in mind with these is um, it will also import a couple of, if, you're, if it's got yes. emails attached to it, it will import an email template. Yes, it will. Um, so it, it is just one of those things you just need to be aware of if you're a little bit, if you've got someone like Di who's quite strict in there. Instance, or me. So I just want to check it off um, with them first. Yeah. Um, so what I often do with these is I'll import them and I'll use the base program structure, but I'll go through and strip out all of the assets and replace them with our own. Um, another key <coughs> troubleshooting piece with it, if you're finding that um, you're trying to import something and it's, it keeps saying there's an error, what you may find is um, it it will let you know in advance when you select a program, it gives you information. It'll let you know what fields are required for that program to work. It requires those fields to be created in advance before you can import it. Be careful they require American spelling. So if you were trying to map to behavioral scoring and you've spelt behavioral with a U, it won't map and it'll throw up an error and then you'll have to go and create a version of that field with no U. Yeah. Fun times. Okay. So we have basically pre-baked, oh, and alphabetizing things, when you put the words for numbers, it doesn't actually alphabetize. Does it? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's fine. Um, so we've kind of done the like Julia Child baking show of here's one I prepared earlier. And we've got a bunch of different things in three different stages, but I think what we're gonna start off with is from complete scratch, cool. building one out, just to show you how you would do that. If you were not importing, which is a valid option. So you select whatever folder it is that you want, go into the new program, and you'll want to find the engagement program from your drop downs. Um, and channel generally is going to be nurture nine times out of ten. Some people have custom channels. If you do, that's fine. Select whatever one works for you. Um, and put in a name that ideally follows your naming conventions. I'm whatever just those may be. That'll do. Um, don't use that in real life, because <laughs> die or I will probably hunt you down and improve upon it. Um, so this is where you'll kind of see some of the key benefits of doing things from program templates, because what we now have is an empty shell with nothing in it. But what we would normally go and do here is go and add all of the folders and start adding all of our assets. But if we jump into one of our pre-baked phase one options, hey! We've got folders and we've got emails. So this is what we would be doing if we were going on doing it all from scratch, but also is a lot of the stuff that would come in automatically if you had the program template imported. Um, so assuming that you have gone through all of the stages that Josh has talked about, one of the key things you want to do at this bit, I think what we were going to do here was stream. Yep. Yes. Thank God I know my stuff. Occasionally I remember it. Um, <coughs> So for this example, what we, Josh and I basically sat around my house drinking wine to try to come up with an idea for what we would do as like, what would our fake company be? Who are we trying to nurture? Um, so we have set up a wine distributor and you can subscribe to a crate of wine every month um, because wine. And what our nurture objective basically was to transition people through the journey of being a subscriber um, and educate them along their wine entrepreneurship journey. Um, and basically what we identified in you know, having a couple of glasses of rosé was that the people who had been on the subscription for one to three months probably had different needs of education, of figuring out what wines they did and didn't like to people who were in the three to six month stage and the six month plus stage. So this is how we've broken down our streams. Adding streams is super easy. There's just that big plus at the end and pops up. You can customize the name to whatever you want. 
whatever you decide works for you. Um, I've done nurture programs where my streams have been divvied up by like stage of, the, um, stage of the buyer journey. You can do them like this by time. You can do them like Josh was saying by the cadence if you have people who you think should be moving through faster or people who you think should be moving through slower. Um, one of the key things as well, once you've got this set up is, sh is you all right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what were we gonna do next? Was it the drag dragging the assets in? Yes. Yes. Um, so you can see we've got topic one, topic two, and topic three in there, but we've actually got two other emails. And there's a couple of different ways you can add emails. It's really easy. You can either drag and drop, or you can also add from that plus. And you should be able to find it. Um, so you can add email assets themselves, and that's kind of your standard, but you can also add nested programs. You can add a nested default program. You can also add a nested event program. Um, personally, I tend to do nested default programs as a default for everything, just because of the options it gives you. I like it, but if you're doing something that's a little bit a little bit faster and simpler and you don't need that kind of complexity, going with emails themselves is fine. There are some trade-offs, um, but we don't need to go into that in too much detail, so that's fine. Um, and of course, you need to make sure that you're activating your assets once you bring them in. If you do not activate them, they will not go. So they're grayed out when they're not active. They're not grayed out when they aren't. Um, a good thing to be aware of as well is that you can also schedule availability on assets. So if you have an asset that you want to be in a nurture, but it's time sensitive and you only want it in for a certain period of time, you can set it to automatically basically become no longer active at a certain period of time. Say, we only want that available for this period. And then you get that clock on the side, which you should all be fairly familiar with as an icon. So, the other, one of the other key pieces that Josh was talking through was how do you get people into and out of different streams. Um, there's a really key thing to understand about transition rules themselves, and that is that they are trigger-based and they cannot be anything but trigger-based. So if your reasons for moving people between streams need to be batched, um, so it's not something you can trigger off, it's not behavioral change, it's not a data value change that you can reliably track, um, you will probably need to handle your transitions using smart campaigns. But for this, we're going to just pull in a trigger that we're going to randomly decide based on our data that doesn't exist. <laughs> Pretend it's there. Um, another key thing that's really important to understand about transition rules as well is that they are, let me get this right, pull-based, not push-based. I always flip those accidentally, and it's bad if you do. So where a smart campaign, if you think about it traditionally as push-based, it's about grab those people over there and do this to them and send them over there. A transition rule instead is about how you drag people into a program. So not, not a program, sorry, drag them into a stream. So for this, what we are looking at is not how do we push people out of this stream, it's how do we pull people into it. And this will only work on people who are already members of the program, will not bring people into the program if they do not qualify, um, and obviously already comes pre-baked with a couple of rules around they must be the member of the program, must be a member of a stream that is not this one. When you jump back into the program, you'll see this view. Um, and you'll get a nice little summary of how that transition rule is working. And like I said, if trigger base doesn't work for you, you can run them off smart campaigns. I've done nurture programs where I've had literally no transition rules and the whole thing has been on smart campaigns, which you can do down there. Do we want to talk about those next? Um, so yeah, some of the things that you need to keep in mind is that, um, like Grace was saying, that transition rules are all about moving people between existing streams. They're not going to add people to the actual program. Yeah. So adding to and removing people from your program, they need to sit within smart campaigns that sit uh, outside of the actual streams. So this is why in our phase two, we've got a number of smart campaigns that sit externally yes. over here. Do we want to talk about those now? Was there anything else we needed to cover in phase one? Probably not really. Cool. All right. Um, so that's phase three. Yep. 
Do we want to talk about the ads and port? We should probably talk about that, but in a little bit more detail sure. in phase two. Um, just because this is something that has really tripped me up a lot in my past. Thankfully, not anymore, because I made that mistake and then I learned from it. Um, yay, documentation. So, key things you need to think about when you're talking about a nurture beyond just how you move people between streams is how does someone get into the program? How do they get out of it? And when should they be receiving comms and when should they not? So you, you generally will, if you're not running um, any of your transition rules of smart campaigns, most nurture programs will basically have those four smart, smart campaign structure set up. You've got one for adding, one for pausing, one for unpausing, and one for marking people as success, which is effectively you're out. Um, one key thing to think about with your ad too is you don't want to make it too restrictive because if you put too many rules in that phase, what often can happen is you end up with people who the, tr the trigger or whatever, whatever your push is to bring them into the program happens, but because of some arbitrary data metric, like, I don't know, for some reason right now their marketing suspended, um, prevents them from coming in. But tomorrow, they're not marketing suspended for some reason. Maybe you've got a process set up to, to null that out after a certain period, whatever that might be. But the point being, the original trigger isn't going to fire again, even though they now meet the criteria. So what you often want to do is make your steps for adding or your filters for adding people relatively lax to really just the bare minimum, ignoring any deliverability stuff and then instead qualifying that on a pause or an unpause. So what I'll often do is um, in the flow step when I add people to a nurture, I'll add them as paused by default and then control, have one of my triggers and unpause be is added to the program and all of the mailability criteria or whatever my other pieces are there are met. Generally, by default, you're going to add people to the first stream. You can add choices there if that's not what, what you want to do. Um, but again, you can choose whether they come in as a normal cadence or as a paused cadence. And just to be clear, that means whether they are going to be receiving emails or whether they are not. Pause it can be anything. Um, it's You'll have all of your standard mailability filters in Marketo that will always suppress people, but sometimes from a reporting perspective, it's nice to pause those people as well so that you can just divvy those out and be like, yep, that's why the number of emails sent is X and not Y. Um, but yeah, whatever you want it to be, it, depending on your business requirements, there can be a bunch of reasons why you wouldn't necessarily want people to be, rece to be receiving comms at any given time. Your resume is equally as important though. You don't want to have a bunch of people who were paused for a genuinely valid reason, but that reason is no longer valid. Um, and they're just sitting there doing nothing, receiving nothing, hearing nothing from you, not buying because they're not being talked to. So you want to make sure that you're unpausing as appropriate. And then, <coughs> I don't know, every single one of these is really important, but this one also really important. Lots of people miss it. <laughs> um, your success metric. So you want to be really thoughtful about this. Um, success, often people have a habit of setting it either way, way, way too early or way, way, way too late. So you might set your success as clicked on an email. It's not actually particularly meaningful to you as a business. So you're going to go up to your CEO and say, oh, our nurture program has an 82% open, 82% um, success rate because that's how many people clicked on my email which A is insane, if that's the engagement you're getting, good job. <laughs> um, but also B, your CEO does not care. The other thing people often do though is um, set it way too far down the customer journey. So you might have it as like they, but they purchase, but what you're trying to sell them has an 18 month customer journey and this nurture program is only catering to the first three months of it. Can't really attribute that reliably. So you wanna be thoughtful on that piece. And then, Phase three. So we've got our program structure, we've got all of our assets, we've got our streams in place, we've got our transition rules. What are some of the things you need to be thinking about when you're getting ready to push live? Number one is your cadence. So each one of your streams, the cadence is set independently. That's why one of the things that a lot of people do is set um, fast streams and slow streams. 
You can set it to be weekly or monthly, but it does give you that calendarized version. So you can have weekly, but I want it to be every Sunday, every Tuesday, every Thursday, and every Saturday. And you just click those. Um, really important to make sure that you select your first cast. Um, as appropriate, because if you think it's going to be every Sunday, but then you don't set your first cast until the Monday, that Sunday one is not going to go. So just be cautious on that. Um, you can also choose different week cadences. So say you want to go every second Tuesday, you can do that just by upping the weeks there. And you can also set your time. Um, the time does have to be set per um, per stream, it's not a per cast. You can't say 10 a.m. on a Tuesday and 3 p.m. on a Thursday. It's the same across all of them. You can also use recipient time zone if it's relevant to your business. So, cadence is set up, transition rules are done, assume they are. Um, Email assets are all in. One of the next things you always want to make sure that you're doing is in here, there's a handy little off and on trigger called program status. Um, when you first create a program, generally this is going to be on by default. As a safety net, I often like to jump straight in as my first thing and turn it to off by default. Um, but when you're ready to go, make sure that you do switch it to on. And you can tell the difference. Um, one that's set to on, it's super pixelated on this and you can't really tell, but there is a little green plus button, not plus, play. Um, and on an off one, it'll turn into a little red stop icon. So it's pretty obvious at a glance what's going on there. But you do want to make sure that your program status is set to on. Um, you can also set up exhausted content notifications, up to you. I don't care personally, most of the time I know when things have expired and it's kind of deliberate. But that's that, um, tokens are as tokens are, they're normal. There's nothing fancy about tokens in nurture programs. Um, once you are done with that, you've got all of your assets approved, your program is on, your cadence is set, um, you've got your transition rules in place, assume all of these are filled out, we don't have enough emails. That, the last step is normally to go through, update all of your, um, n your sorry, smart campaigns. Um, random tip that I apply to everything, not just nurture programs, I tend to approve everything, from, um, not approve, activate everything from bottom to top. Um, hopefully a lot of people do that as well. I'm slightly paranoid, but generally, um, if you are activating something that forces an asset out, so you're sending an email to a bunch of people, and then someone comes over and goes, oh my god, there's a fire alarm, we all have to leave the building. And then you come back 15 minutes later and you activate your smart campaign for registering opens, you're going to miss everyone who opened in that 15 minute break. So generally bottom to top is a good idea. And that's what we would do. And then that would be it. Basically, that's kind of how you build a nurture program in, what was that, 15 minutes. <laughs> so it takes way longer in real life, but we didn't have to build emails. So don't let like your bosses come back to you and be like, oh, well, you can do that in 15 minutes, right? <laughs> There's also testing, which we don't go into, but... But that's kind of where a lot of, of that scenario validation would kind of come into place. Yes. Um, one of the things that I will put together is a quick um, worksheet, um, a Google Doc that you can... I'll pop that up in the community. Uh, in the, the Auckland user group community. So if you did want to look at downloading that, um, I'll pop that up probably by the end of this week, yes. just so that you can download that and to help out with creating scenarios and help to, with the testing process. But also in the meantime, um, so I've developed a little bit of a reputation for going into Market our community and having a rant about stuff. Um, yeah, this week is no different. <laughs> Um, so I've been collating this enormous checklist of all of the things that you should be checking through before you launch something. Um, and because I'm nice, I posted it on community, so. Let's, I need to get closer. Oh, sorry. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, I actually went and scrolled through it, and this is only like half of it. There's way more of it if you go scrolling through. But um, the link is there. If you want to check it out, feel free to steal it. Um, it is based on, 
And for like things that I have screwed up, things that people I know have screwed up, things that I've seen other companies screwed up, um, I've chatted with a bunch of the other champions and a few Marketo employees to kind of put this together. I may have stolen a few things from Joe Wrights, but he <laughs> gave me permission, so it's fine. Um, it's pretty enormous, just pre-warning you. My recommendation is not that you go through it for every single program. You do, that would be insane. Um, but the idea is basically take a look, take the things that are useful to you, leave the things that are not, go through the things that are relevant for that program, don't go through the things that aren't, um, and hopefully it'll stop you from maybe blowing up the world like that poor cat. That's that. Questions? Any questions? Just applaud. <laughs> In which case, I think it's high time for drinks. Uh, just before we just go. Just before we go? Oh, there's more. Um, oh, just I before spoke we go. too soon. Um, part of everything that we always talk about with here. Yes. Um, this is um, basically one of the, the roadmaps to becoming a Marketo advocate. So if you are interested in getting a little bit more involved. Yep. Um, again, this we're going to be putting this presentation up on the, the um, Marketo community as well, just so you can all access it. Yep. Um, so feel free to, if you're wanting to look at understanding how to get a little bit more involved, either come and have a chat to um, Grace and myself, um, and you can check out this link here. There's sweet swag. Just FYI. <laughs> Everybody loves swag. There are so many awesome resources out there. Um, if you can't ever get a hold of Grace and I, um, just search for us in the community. We're probably writing and commenting. Um, there are so many other awesome um, resources out there. Joe Wrights is one of them. He's got a Wicked YouTube channel that you could yep. um, definitely check out. He does a lot of kind of the stuff that we've just gone through um, at a beginner, intermediate, and an advanced level. Definitely worth checking out. Um, there is the Marketo community. This is where I spent pretty much my first two years living and breathing yeah. everything that's in here. And it has helped me understand Marketo so much more. Um, also, just before we move on on that point, ask questions because people do <laughs> answer them. Like, don't look at it and be like, oh, if I post something, no, no one's in my time zone. Josh and I will probably answer yeah. you. I'm not even kidding. It'll probably be us. Um, and, but also, don't be one of those people who asks a question that they didn't search community for because Sanford <laughs> Whiteman will find you and he will kill you. <laughs> Just so. Um, otherwise, there are the, all the Marketo help docs as well, and they are super easy to follow. They've got a lot yes. of sort of images to sort of walk you through step by step. It's really, really easy. Um, you also have us. Um, and so we, as, as Grace was saying, we, we basically live in, in the, the Marketo community. Tied to that is uh, the that actual Auckland user group. So if you're not in the Auckland user group, definitely get in there and sign up. And, and you know, comment on things and like things because it's lonely. <laughs> it's just us. Um, you've also got your local Marketo team. So you've both you've got um, Chrissy um, and Aaron here as well. So if you do need any of them, if you need to reach out to them, all of their details are in this presentation as well. Um, they're really badass. They're really great. Chrissy says hi. By the way, she couldn't be here because she's on holiday. Boo her. Um, this is what Grace was talking about a little bit earlier. Yes. We. Um, always struggle to figure out what kind of things you guys are really interested in. And so we put this survey together just so that you can tell us what you want to hear more about. And we really want to hear from you. Yeah. <laughs> so again, we're going to probably post this as a separate post in the community, um, but it's also tied to this here if you download this and need the, the actual um, slide deck. Yeah. That's if you've got anything you want to hear about, <clears throat> if you want to speak, let us know, because um, we're happy to have people like die. I don't think even you guys volunteered. I think we, we, we stalked we, you guys and we're like, please, we literally went out to please. both Ben and die and went, hey guys. <laughs> but also, also just as an FYI, it's, it can be completely anonymous. You can add your details if you want to, but it can be completely anonymous and it is run by us. It is not run by Marketo. So just in case you're nervous. Um, one of the last things that we've got up here are Definitely check out the sessions at Summit. Yes. Um, Grace and I and a few others in the room were really, really lucky enough to actually manage to go to Summit earlier this year, and it was really, really awesome. There were some fantastic, fantastic sessions that we got yep. the chance to go to. Um, all of the sessions, every single one of them were recorded and are posted up on here. So again, it's in the slide deck that you can download. Super worth checking out, super worth checking out. At a bare minimum, go on and look at Jessica Cow's A-B testing session. Um, just 
it is fantastic. It'll, it may blow your mind of all of the things that you probably hadn't really been thinking about, but it's super logical. And she has a PhD, so she should know. She does. Hmm. I think that's that it? it. That's, that's not it. the clicker, Diane. That's it. The clicker go. has decided it's time to go. Um, so feel free to hang around outside there, guys. Um, there's a few more nibbles and things up the back. We're going to be out there. Um, come and have a chat to us. Otherwise, have a good rest of your evening. And thank you so much for coming. And please come next time and bring a friend. Yes. <laughs>